Hello, my friends, and happy Easter. We have emerged from our long Lent. We have emerged from Holy Week, and perhaps a few of us have been fortunate enough to celebrate Triduum, if not in person, then uh, via the internet. With John chapter 20, verses 19 to 31, we have arrived very close to the end of St. John's Gospel. I hope the genius of, of this biblical book has, has come alive for you in our presentations this past Lent and today. The evangelist is wrapping up his witness to Jesus Christ. And one of the things we'll be looking at today is the great amount of continuity, continuation from the earlier narratives in this gospel. We will see St. John referring back to many things, to many events and episodes. And perhaps we can use that to look back upon our recent experiences in pandemic, as well as our reflection on John's Gospel from previous Sundays. Let's begin with a painting from the French artist James Tissot. What do you notice in this appearance of Jesus to his disciples in the locked room? Did you find yourself among the disciples with an expression of surprise? Did you notice the light coming from Jesus' hands in this image? The importance of light, you'll remember, vital in the beginning of the gospel in chapter one, as well as in the episode of the man born blind in John chapter nine. I regret to say I could not find a credit for this painting that I found in a few locations online, but in this likely contemporary artist, what do you notice with this encounter with the risen Lord? Here the artist focuses on the personal relationship of the disciple with the Lord and not quite so much on the signs of his crucifixion as we see in Jesus' hand. Let's begin exploring our text with an eye to continuity between the reading that we have for this coming Sunday and previous events and narratives in the Gospel of St. John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. Remember Jesus' earlier address to his disciples, My peace I give you first instance of continuity in this reading. What do you notice in this painting and whom do you notice?
When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Three sentences here, but there's a lot packed into this. Notice the showing of the hands and side. St. John is suggesting a continuity between the passion of the Lord and his resurrection. Also notice the disciples' experience of joy. They are not afraid of the supernatural event, Jesus appearing to them despite the locked door. And in this last sentence here, as the Father has sent me, so I send you, Jesus is offering yet another continuity. The Father has sent the Son. The Son sends disciples. This mission continues to this very day. We have been sent because we have been recipients of the tradition handed on to us by the disciples. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. This continuity goes way back. Remember in Genesis, the Father breathing life into the human beings that he has created. This mission this reception of the Holy Spirit is a continuation of the very creation of the universe. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. I'm one of those people who thinks that Thomas gets a bad rep for this. Indeed, this is another point of continuity in John's Gospel. Going back to chapter 4, after the encounter with the Samaritan woman, Jesus is telling people, he's chiding them, unless you see signs and wonders, you won't believe. Thomas, in a sense, is representing all of those of us who adhere to the gospel of seeing is believing. And Jesus is inviting us to something more. Now, a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. The iconographer represents this scene not really on the inside, but on the outside. So why do you think he might have done that? And what else do you notice in this image? Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. So this early Italian master shows something of what we've seen in icons. What do you notice in this slightly zoomed-in portion of a painting of his from around 1400.
if there were a top 10 Christian paintings of all time. Certainly Caravaggio's presentation, as we see in this image, would be in that select group. What do you notice here from another Italian master? Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. This magnificent portrait of St. Thomas from the contemporary artist Paul Damian Namesto. Notice the Latin inscription, Dominus meus, et Deus meus, my Lord and my God. What do you notice in this? And what does this painting tell you about St. Thomas? Christian tradition tells us that St. Thomas preached and evangelized in what is today the nation of India. What do you notice in this contemporary portrait of St. Thomas? Thomas's wonderful confession is often depicted in iconography. And also notice the tongue of flame at the top of the apostle's head. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The days and the weeks after Easter Sunday are a perfect and beautiful time for us to encounter the Lord Jesus risen from the dead. Matthew chapter 28, the 16th chapter of Mark's Gospel, Luke 24, as well as John chapters 20 and 21. The whole point of these Gospels is not to relate a history and not just to give a biography of Jesus. The intent is, as St. John states it here, that we may come to belief and through belief in Christ, we may come to have eternal life. My sisters and brothers, I hope that you have found this and the other Bible studies helpful and fruitful for your spiritual life. I wish you the peace and blessings of the Lord Jesus during the Easter season.